Uh, this is Paul Knight, and I'm online with Chris Gordon from Hellblazer Biz. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening and good night viewers wherever you are in the world right now. You're tuned in to Hellblazer Biz with your host as always Chris Gordon. That's me. There are many shows out there. Hellblazer Biz is the one, however, that brings you the extra step closer to your favourite TV and film stars as you get to have your questions asked to them and you get shout outs. This week's guest is a director and screenwriter who's here to talk about his latest film, A Landscape of Lies, starring Andrew McLean and Danny Midwinter. I had the pleasure of watching a screener of this prior to the interview and will be attending a premiere on the West End of London on the 18th of January, for which I am very, very proud, and I'll be meeting Paul, Danny, and other members of cast and crew there too. So without further delay, I introduce to you, Mr. Paul Knight. have the honour and the delight of the company of Paul Knight today uh, of Knight Productions and the producer and director of and writer of Landscape of Lies which is an award winning film coming out very soon so hello Paul again hello Chris great I'm glad, really honoured and proud that you're on and you wanted to join me uh, I know we've been conversing quite a while to get this set up so I really appreciate it we finally <laughs> managed to get it sa- tagged down <laughs> So yeah, no, I thank you. It's all now. That's it is, yeah, it is, yeah. Anyway, so, yeah, as I said, appreciate you coming on. Uh, talk about landscape of lies, which I actually had the pleasure of watching yesterday, and watching the screener of it, and I really enjoyed it. It was nice. I'll, I'll say nice. It was nice. It was just good. <laughs> so, to watch, the same film. Yeah, to watch before bed. I say, it's a good film, not a nice. Yeah, I wouldn't say it's a nice film because of the, <laughs> the content in there. Yeah. <laughs> but it was a good film to watch, and uh, yeah, and it's a very well acted and well rounded film. To be honest, so I was I was pretty impressed with it. Okay, so I'm quite yeah. quite even more than happy now to be speaking to you about that film. <laughs> hey. Everyone, everyone else, see you about one of. Five people that have seen it, so you know. All right, I'm very honoured. I feel uh, <laughs> definitely feel honoured there. Uh, yeah, and I'm quite yeah. I can't wait for more people to watch it. To be honest, because it is a, it's a cracking film. It's a it's a great film. So kind of starting right back to the beginning, then Paul. How did you get into creating films and writing films? Oh, oh, this oh, this is a long story. Um, <laughs> I always oh, always scare people off when I go back to this. Before I got into films, um, what's the easiest way to say it? I, I ran in a certain circle, mm-hmm. had certain stories and escapades and things that people write best-selling books about. And then when I put all that aside me, I was bringing out my first book back in 2007, um, Coding of a Concrete Animal. Mm-hmm. And this was back in the days of MySpace. So this takes you back wow. how many years <laughs> And I was talking to another act, uh, another writer, similar background to me, just different neck of the woods. He too was writing a book about his escapades, mm-hmm. and uh, that's how we got talking. And he always said, "I'm turning my book into a film. I'm turning my book into a film." So every time I saw him or spoke to him, it was like, "Oh, where's your film coming?" You know, I find yeah. it got no interest in making film, but I find it interesting. You're going to make a film. Mm-hmm. And he said, and every time it was a horror story, some producer had ripped him off, someone else had done this, someone had promised something. Two years this went on, and then it was at the book launch of his second book yeah. that I, I attended. And I said, how's your film? And he went, and he told me one more sub story, and I said, right, that's it. The book launch was on a Thursday, <laughs> and by Monday, I had written my first script, and we said, we're going to go film it. We can prove that you don't need money, you don't need this, we're just going to go off and do it. Yeah. And that's what we did. So, And then it was after that. I mean, every because I was in my forties, so any tra- <laughs> no training, no nothing. Mm-hmm. So any mistake you could make, we made it. <laughs> I mean, it was terrible, absolutely terrible. But it gave me the bug, and I thought I enjoy this. Yeah, and uh, that's how I got into it. That's that's a pretty cool story. It's very different to what uh, what you normally <laughs> <laughs> what you normally hear, to be fair. And uh, yeah, no, it's a good uh, it's good that you actually tried something out as well, and you know it sort of steered you in in, in that direction. And um, I, I guess it's very similar to what I'm doing now because I didn't think I'd ever be interviewing. And I didn't think I'd ever enjoy it. <laughs> I just started doing it one day because I was 
bored on Twitter, and uh, I couldn't say, an, uh, you know, I couldn't write ninety, ca- no, one hundred and forty characters. Yeah. Uh, so I just started talking on the podcast, and that's how it goes. And it sort of it's, it's spun off as well. So it's nice to hear that you know you you just did that because you helping <laughs> you're helping a friend out as well. You know, just say right, let's go and do this sod it. <laughs> and, you're, and you're right, you don't need big budgets, you really don't, to make a decent film. Uh, and I think that's, especially in today's market, as oh, yeah. you know, as things are going on, you've got, you've got YouTube, you've got Netflix, you've got Vimeo, you've got every, you know, all these avenues where you can actually just let your films get seen by the world, and, and you know, in video on demand, you, you're not limited to getting a big budget to get it on the cinema screens. No, that's right. I mean, it's not, and it's also not the old school tie where you have to know someone to get a deal and it's this and it's that. Yeah. And obviously the equipment that, like, the kids today are taking for granted. I mean, you look at the winner of Sundance last year, Tangerine, mm. shot it on his iPhone. So <laughs> yeah. everyone who says, oh, I need this Arri and I need this mm-hmm. lens and I need this, and it, you don't because it's proven just go out, be creative, get what you want to get. Exactly, exactly, and, I, and again, I'll take this back to mind. My son won an award last summer. In oh, fact, he won, he won two for making films on his iPhone. He did one, which was a Harry Potter contest. He had to film, do two, three minutes of a local, all the local heritage in Wales. So he oh, went, okay. so he went round and he had a script and he did all the castles and stuff. And he won the, he won out of sixteen schools in North Wales and the whole area, in the district, whatever, county, or whatever. He came first. So he won a competition. Then they handed him a form at the end of term to do another film for the International Wales Youth Film Festival. Okay. It's just a little. It's a local one, North Wales, and he entered that. He did it on the beach. He took his iPhone to get <laughs> onto Anglesey. So I was, I was there filming him on me on his like iPhone for him, him and his little mate, and he ended up winning that competition as well. Oh, and, yeah. and, and he got screened, which was <laughs> which was really. <laughs> out. Yeah, which, so yeah, you're right. You know, iPhone, you get an iPhone out or any other phone. I'm sure there are. Yeah, yeah, there, are other, yeah. there, are other, there are other phones available. <laughs> I, I'm, an Andrew, I'm an Android user myself. <laughs> I think, uh, I'm just uh, bigging up the iPhone. But, yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, you know, I've I've just come from the big Pixel too. To be fair, and that's you know that's a cracking camera on that as well. So you know there are plenty. They film in 4K. You know, so it's not as if they're, yeah, they're really poor yeah. quality. So yeah, you can just get out there and go and. and Go and make something and fulfil your dreams. It's it's a pretty good world to be in. <laughs> Makes me wish I was at least thirty years younger. That's uh, <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, true. I mean, I was speaking to um, a couple of guys who've done indie films. I'm really like yourself, obviously. With Landscape of Lies is it's a professional. Yeah. It's not on an iPhone. So it's a very professional thing. So when you get into more areas like that, then yeah. Yeah, you know, I think it was a hundred k for a camera for, um, for for someone had told me once for one of their films. I was like, oh bloody hell! <laughs> yeah. I'll have two, no problem. Yeah, yeah. So no, it's 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 great, and it's uh, it's inspiring to other people as well to see that and to sort of hear how you got into films, and obviously, especially with, like you just said there with the technology that you can do it. Tangerine one on an iPhone, you know that kind of thing. Yeah. It's it's phenomenal, and it's it's a great world to be in in this sort of industry now but it is a hard one and like you said you know your friend had got turned down and you've been let yeah. down and he, I've experienced a little bit of it myself with some of the things that I've tried to get into in the acting world that things just don't happen or or people just suddenly turn like that and you're like okay <laughs> you know yeah, yeah. and yeah. you have to change it and uh, so yeah but it's um to get to where you've got to um you know if you've you, you, this was it's not your ninth film. You've you've, really, you've had nine films. You've written about nine yeah. films. I know this one was probably this one's been going for a while. Yeah, well, hasn't this it? Is 2011. Obviously, we originally filmed Landscape yeah. June June the first, 2011. So that's a that's, that's taken a good time to come it's, through. It's a journey and a half. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But like you say, I mean, it's worth it. Look, you you just done the what out to the can festival, and you came away with yeah. four awards for best director, actor, actress, and some best supporting actor as well. So that is bloody impressive yeah well that's more of a testament I think to the talent we had in front of the camera rather than <laughs> behind it but, um, well best director is the one behind it so you've got that as well nice <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so it's, you know, it's not just a, I mean the guys in front of the camera to be fair they're just doing what the people behind the script they, they turn what they turn the script into something that can be seen but if the scripts are bad and the storyline's bad then it's you know it's yeah, not, it's, yeah. So you know, it is the. I'll, I'll take the praise. 
Right, no problem. <laughs> exactly. See, see, you should take it when you can. It comes. But yeah, it's it's a, it's a it's a it's a mix of everything, I think, and it has to be the right sort of writing, the right you know everything comes together. And Lance, yeah. from what I saw last night, it did. It was it was a it was a cracking film. Um, and I won't spoil it for anyone because I was about to say something there. What, what happened? And I was like, no, I can't. Um, yeah, let's, let's talk about it. Let's be two guys in a pub. Let's go for it. But it was, it was, it was a great film. There were some surprises in there for me. Um, we definitely, and it was good to see uh, some familiar faces, as I said, which we'll, yeah. I'll, I'll talk about after as well. Um, so, did acting? As I was, sorry, going going right back to that original question yeah. again of getting getting into creating films, was that? There was a no express to go in front of the camera yourself. I know you have done a couple of times, but yeah, I mean, the, the first film obviously we, we made it literally with the pennies in our pocket. You mm-hmm. know, there was we had no benefactor. It was literally we pulled it out and whatever was in our hand that day. That's how much determined we could film that day. Yeah. Um, so you had to be in front of the camera as well as behind the camera and do fifteen jobs. Um, otherwise, it was never going to get done. And then I did a one straight after that, just in front of the camera. But no, uh, people tell me I've got a face for radio, and I'm quite happy, <laughs> to, um, <laughs> quite happy to stick with that behind the camera rather than in front of it. Yeah. Oh, fair enough. I got told that recently as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't like jovial people, Chris. That's what no, it is. Exactly, do. exactly. Yeah, people are too happy. Although I did a, a lovely director, and he was doing, he was an independent film guy. He's just released his first film, and he turned around to me on camera, and I thought he's just sweet talking me so he can get a good review from me on the <laughs> film. But he said he goes, you know, you actually did this. He's looking at it, he goes, you look really good on screen. And I was like, well, thank you. <laughs> it's my phone number. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> get me in your film, and I'll, be, you know, <laughs> if I look good on screen, I look. I did actually say that in the end. I said if I look good on screen, I'll probably look great on yours on on the you know on your film. <laughs> But well, you've got to try, haven't you? <laughs> well, we'd love to try, Chris. Well, we'd love to try. <laughs> exactly. And God only knows I've tried. <laughs> <laughs> tried or just try in? Try you know? in, should I say? Yeah. <laughs> I'm still, I'm still, I'm still trying. I've. <laughs> Uh, no, that's really cool. As I say, we said it's the latest drink. Um, well, as you've gone along, then, because like you say, you started out with the pennies in your pocket, and, yeah. and now you've just really, you know, you've, you've got your award-winning films coming out. What have you kind of learnt along the way to develop your skills from each film? What have you taken away from each one to sort of move across? Whoa, that's a controversial it's a deep question. <laughs> um, what I took away is don't trust anyone <laughs> they can do something. Um, like I say, our first film, we had proper film students that have just done degrees, and and yet every flaw in the film is because of them. You know, right. I mean, we're mm-hmm. amateurs, we knew nothing. We relied on their expertise. And, mm-hmm. yeah. and as you go along, and you're right, as you go up, you'll come across what every, the thing that every filmmaker wants is money, obviously. Yeah. And there are scrupulous people out there that will and deliver a grave instead of a <laughs> mountain. You know what I mean? So uh-huh. it's, um, all I can say is learn as much as you can on every... So now, because I edited landscape as well, mm-hmm. there's very little I don't know. So if I then sub the work out, it's like, well, I know my workflow was I could do X amount of editing in an hour, and so don't charge me for three months when I know it can be done in six weeks. So yeah. It has been useful learning every single thing. It's been a challenging task, but I recommend any filmmaker, don't stick with just being a director or being a camera guy or whatever. Learn it all mm-hmm. and you'll appreciate it more and get more out of it. Very nice very way nice. to say it. A very great way to say it as well. And again, it's, um, that's, uh, have you heard of the director TJ Scott? Uh, uh, yes. You know Gotham. He's been on the show. He chats yeah. to me. A few, he's a lovely guy, and he pretty much said the same thing from his point of view. So you, you, you were right in the lines of that. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't listened to you. Pretty yeah. Much. Oh, you're right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know whether to take that as a compliment or not. In the fact that you've not listened to it. <laughs> well, I didn't want to come in with any preconceptions, and then you know you'd be tempted to. Oh, that was a good answer. I'll copy that. So I'm happy. Oh, as yeah. fluid as possible. There you go. You managed to dig yourself out of that one. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, but TJ, I mean, you know, the people I say, because I have, over two years, I've spoken to people in front of the camera and behind the camera, and it does seem to be a consistent thing from those behind the camera for the ones who've got more successful 
areas is that they said you if you learn everything that everybody is doing so that you know and like you can experience it and from your side especially making independent film it helps yeah. because you can you can like you say you can <laughs> call them out when they're trying to rip you off you know that was <laughs> But you know, it's no, it's great to be able to switch and switch roles. So when you actually direct someone, when you tell someone, maybe move the camera that way, it's because you know, because you've done it and you you know, yeah. and you've been there. Um, so it's it's good to have that all round thing, and I think that kind of helps as well because it bring, brings a bigger rapport. People respect and look towards that then because they know, you know, you're, they're, they're dealing with someone who knows what they're doing. Yeah. And it, and it also has the flip side because they always. <laughs> And then swear at you under their breath, going, oh, <laughs> "Yeah, I'm getting away with this one." <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. So, <laughs> no, that's pretty cool. So, going to landscape of lies. Um, let's say I watched this last night. Um, I'm going to let you, obviously, out of the Cannes Festival by Best Director, you got the Best Actor, Best Actress, and Best Supporting Actor, which is fantastic. Danny Midwinter and and uh, Andre Nightingale star, and yeah. it's also Andrew McLean, who a lot of people yeah. I think in the UK will know as the uh, Weather Lady from GMTV and also Loose Women. Uh, this is her first outing, wasn't it, as an actress? This, this, this is a one and speaking to after uh, only <laughs> um, <laughs> film she's ever wanted to uh, undertake. Um, yeah, she. Um, it was her first film. Obviously, she's been in front of the camera for years, as we know. Mm-hmm. Um, so, obviously, my wife pointed her out on Loose Women when we was trying to figure out who to cast. Right, and and it was nice that she took a chance with us. It was um, she was brilliant on set, and for someone who hadn't acted before, she well, you've seen it. She comes across quite well, I think, considering how she is in real life. Yeah, I think the, the portrayal of the character was was brilliant. It was definitely, and I think that was one of the highlights for me because people who do know Andrew, you know, obviously, as I say, from Loose Women, <laughs> Happy Jovial, you know, you know joking, yeah. <laughs> and yeah, what, she, yeah, on the on the film again, with well, no spoilers or anything, but the way they, well, the character, she's a psychologist on the character, so again, just that very role is totally yeah. different, um, and and she, did, you know, it's like you, I, I wouldn't have known it was her first time either because you know she she fitted, she she sort of, um, what's the word? slipped into the role I'd say very very yeah. easily um, and, and was very convincing as she came across and you know I mean, as was everybody uh, I mean that again the opening scene with Danny Midwinter I was like Jesus Christ I was like, you know, it was uh, yeah. <laughs> it was just like okay so this is how the, you know, I wasn't sure what the film was going to be about so yeah. <laughs> and then uh, that opened, opening scene I was like alright okay that's just set my mood set my expectations <laughs> about what, where we're going to go with this it's pretty cool Excuse me. Sorry. And, uh, <laughs> well, I don't mind you muting it out of me. <laughs> well, yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> so, yeah, obviously, you know, that kind of film where it is. So, without, obviously, spoilers, can you tell us more about what, what explain to the audience what Landscape of Lies is about? Oh, I think over the years, we've, we've tailored it so much um, that you could pick one, one route. It's just basically, what's, what's the best way to do it? Something has happened to um, to collide four separate lives, if you like, and it's just the way all lives are connected and in very subtle ways. I mean, obviously, you've watched it. There's certain things we don't hit the audience over the head with sledgehammer. It's it's there, and if you miss mm-hmm. it, watch it again. But we don't. We're not going to make a big thing about it. Um, and obviously, we cover a lot of areas. We've obviously the soldier with PTSD. Um, we've got obviously the LGBT element yeah. we've got the mental awareness element we've got the other element <laughs> <laughs> um and and all that goes on obviously um all around the death you know of a serial killer that again we don't you know it's not that mind hunter thing it's um we try to be subtle just by telling the, the story of these lives basically it's it, it came out better than i was expecting you know what I mean? Well, that's good to hear from yourself. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that's again, that's how I got it. It was obviously it was a, it was a tale of separate lives, and they were because I was watching very closely, um, so I could actually 
talk to you with some knowledge <laughs> of what we're talking about. Yeah, yeah nobody else. <laughs> there have been a few times where I've come on and I've talked to someone because people have said, bring this person. It's like, great for me because I'd love to talk to them, talking to people. But I haven't had time to catch up and watch what, <laughs> what the work is yeah. or I've not been yeah. sent it. So, you know, it's, it's, it's great to actually know and understand. And there are, there are, there are some very subtle bits in there. And you're right, yeah. if you do miss it, it's it's gone. So you have to what you have to be you know, have to be on your game and watch all the way through. And I do think that the topics that you do bring, like you mentioned there, you have got the PTSD in there um, from the soldiers, which is something that's getting drawn out and uh, not drawn out. What's the word? It's getting recognised a lot more yeah. now, and it should be. And same with the mental mental awareness and areas in there that you know, okay, goes people might look okay on the outside, but you know. The, they could be battling anything on the inside yeah. and, and from everything and there's a lot of that out there and I think it's, it's good that the film actually recognises and highlights and illustrates that you know there are people out there and just because you know you you look okay or you, you, you act okay during the day doesn't mean that you be, someone can not be crumbling inside and need be reaching out for help yeah, and, and I mean, obviously, and these are subjects, like I was saying, we, we did in 2011. I'm, I know they're all in now and they're the in keywords and people are trying to yeah. pick a box. <laughs> them. But obviously, we've done it. They Just because share the problems were still there and, you know, these issues were all still there all these years ago. It's just obviously, so we think our film might be a little bit ahead of its time. That's probably <laughs> how I'll put it. Well, it's like, say, it's back in 2011, they weren't being banded around and... No. Uh, and there just seems to be, uh, I'll get killed for what I'm about to say, a lot of bandwagons that people seem to jump on. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, but in a good, in, I guess in, it's all in a good thing because it, it does, you know, everyone gets on it and people's attention gets drawn to it. Um, uh, and, you know, people come out and say stuff and, and, and things like that should be, you know, brought out, especially with the mental, aware, mental awareness. Now we have mental awareness weeks and yeah. things that weren't there in 2011. So, yeah, landscape of lies. Like more like Back to the Future type <laughs> it's yeah, yeah. A time it's like machine. Simpsons predicting the future, you know what I mean? Oh like, god, yeah, don't go into that. <laughs> <laughs> was it three times they've done that now? Well, I thought th- when I watched off, was uh, the clip, I think they've done actually twenty seven. Twenty seven is twenty seven times they've, pre- they've come up with saying and a, a year or even ten years later it's happened, so yeah. yeah, that is shocking. It was the I think the yeah, there's the call oh, because of the Trump one, wasn't it? Because they pretty yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'll do it. yeah, I'm not going to get onto that. Otherwise, we'll be until <laughs> till the morning. <laughs> the show will be very blue, and I'll probably get never live be allowed into the United States ever again. <laughs> well, that's to be over the internet. You don't need to go over there. You know what I mean? Well, no, no, exactly, exactly. Uh, I do like Florida, though. We like <laughs> we, enjoy, <laughs> yeah. we enjoy going, but I have actually vowed that I'm not going to go until a certain person is no longer in a position of <laughs> that he's in. <laughs> That, that certain person you've got, what, two and a half more years to go? Exactly. To be yeah. honest, it's going to take about that long for me to save to get there. But <laughs> See, it all works out. It does, it does. It's, it's, see, it's, it's all perfectly fine. I think it's because the last time we went was about last year, just before the election. I'm not going to get into politics, but it's before the election. And I, I'm, I'm quite vocal and I do my... Um, I, I gave my son an impression, and he went and turned. He started walking down the street because I was like, "What was it?" Goes, <laughs> and I was like, "Shut up!" Because <laughs> obviously, there's all the vote Trump that down in Florida, very much so. They they're very you know that uh, supporting yeah. and that. And I just did my little red. It's my redneck impression. It's not a racist impression. My friend, my American friends love it because it's, it's like it's like was it? Um, yeah, he goes, he goes, I got me my boom boom stick. Pull a little <laughs> trigger, it go boom boom. <laughs> <It's> like, <you laughs> know, <laughs> And yeah, my little lad loved it, and he started walking down the street saying it when all this like you know Americans walking. <laughs> I was like, "Shut up!" <laughs> Kids, you gotta love them, didn't you? No filter, no filter. There isn't. No, I was just like crying and dying of embarrassment. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's uh, yeah. Once once that's happened, we'll, we'll go back. Um, but yeah, it's uh, the, the right back to the Simpsons. I was predicting it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so I told you, I'll be here all night. <laughs> I think there is an episode where you are in Florida in The Simpsons, so you know <laughs> they they know you're going back. <laughs> See, I'd, I'm, I'm pretty much in a lot of episodes, though, because all you got to do is look at the comic book guy, and, that, <laughs> and, and that's me. I pretty much look like him as well. I just need to do this stuff. In fact, I was going to go to another Comic-Con, an ex-Comic-Con as comic book guy. <laughs> worst, worst comparison ever. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh god. So yeah, as again going back to the landscape of lies, which is what we're all about. Here. <laughs> um, I t- sorry, I got, this is where my show goes. This is what I, I I get distracted and I I, I, I used to be called Ramblings of a Hellblazer purely because <laughs> yeah, we used to just get into loads of different conversations and ramble on and on. <laughs> Um, so Dan, I mean, you know, you, how did you get someone like Danny Midwinter yourself? I say because he's got he's got a nice extensive. You've gone into how and you know you saw Andrea on Loose Women and were like we'll approach yeah. her. How do you go about approaching people like this? Um, to be fair, where Danny Mid- and he'll, we laugh about it now, but when his name came up, I didn't want him. Right, Not because I thought he was a bad actor or anything. Yeah. but he just played how uh, the character Brannigan was originally written. He just played that one in the Best Actor Award with it in Freight. Mm-hmm. And I thought, for him, it's it's just going to be too samey. He's just going to come in and just redo the... He's just done it. Yeah. So I wasn't really keen on him coming forward. And someone gave him my phone number, God bless him, and he <laughs> phoned me up while we was at Pinewood, and he said, look, don't, don't dismiss me. Let, let me come audition for it. He said, you know, I'll, I'm not proud. I will, I will come do it. Don't give me just because of my credits. Yeah. Uh, and I just went, look, we're filming here. If you want to come up, show me what you got. But, you know, and obviously come up with the take that you see in the film. And it was just mm-hmm. like, <laughs> mate, what was I thinking? Let's sign you up on the dotted line. And and I guess that's it, isn't it? An actor, an actor who wants to work and understands the work, mm-hmm. they'll get it every time. And obviously I, after that, I thought Danny just blew it away. I shouldn't say it because other actors will be going, mm, but <laughs> but to be fair, considering the whole storyline was originally based on Andre Nightingale's character as the Jacob the soldier. Right. It does Danny's character does kind of now dominate the the Fred, but probably mm-hmm. cause he stands out so much. That's what it is. Yeah, I think. Yeah, probably. Yeah, because it, it does. Yeah. It's, it's very sort of does come. I mean, you, you can get the um, you know the. Uh, Andre's character does come through, and you, you do follow that storyline quite strongly. Yeah. yeah, like I say, I think Danny is just—he's just his screen presence on that film was just every, yeah. <laughs> every time he was on it, it was—you know—you could see it was brilliant. It was very, very well done, and I think you've hit nail on the head as well because I know this. And again, uh, it might put it might stump my show for getting people in the future, but <laughs> there, I think there is a difference between actors who there's not many of them to be fair. Act, I've never spoken to any, so I'll just get myself in the good books. <laughs> who, who just <laughs> Who just do it for the money? Did you want my shovel to get you out of that one? <laughs> yeah, you know who just want to do it for the money, um, and, and so and likewise. To be fair, everyone I've spoken to, they're not. But I think there are there are a minority out there who do, and I think that compared that shows very much so in the quality of something compared to those who just who really do love the craft and they yeah. stood they study the craft they love the craft and they love what they do and they love the way they interact with things and with 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 the cast and the crew i mean there are other shows out the lethal weapon show lucifer i mean I've, I've had the joy of speaking to those guys and they love what they do as well and yeah. and you can see that in the final product so uh, hearing that danny loved it you can tell that because that just seems to come through. That oh, not just Danny or the Andrew. Everybody in that cast seem yeah. to really th- love, love, uh, love what they do for a living, and it it comes right through the screen. If that's uh, yeah, I know because I, I think it helps that when when someone brings their A game, everyone brings their A game. You know yeah. what I mean? Because no one wants to be left behind, and mm-hmm. I think it just pushes each other. And as soon as some like. Um, so I won't go into too many things, but you know, but when Danny's with um, Victoria Hopkins, the red-headed bodyguard, yeah. very mm, scene, mm-hmm. <laughs> where obviously he set the tone and then she went, right, like, I'll, I'll see the level, I raise you. Yeah. I just think it's, and uh, thankfully all the cast were like that. And they, every time they was on set and it's like, I'm out to do you, I'm out to do you. And, it's, <laughs> and hence why obviously for Out of the Cam, we, performance-wise was awarded you know we, we took practically every title so well you did as well which is you know not, not yeah. bad going at all <laughs> well when you think uh, Andrea beat um, Karen Gillian for best actress she on be, that festival did she she beat Karen yeah. Gillian on that yeah. so um, and, and I, I, I have spoken to her <laughs> and Andrea since but um, I, d- I did ask the judges look I'm not knocking my actress you know she mm. did a great job but it's Karen Gillian, you know, she's <laughs> got Jumanji coming out and Doctor Who and Guardians of the Galaxy. And they said, to be fair, in the 
film that was submitted, uh, Bound for Greatness. Yeah. She played a very similar role that she's known for. Right. And therefore, when you compare, obviously, Andrea's character, mm -hmm. there was so much difference. Yeah. Said, performance wise, we felt in this instant Andrea out acted her. So, a debut actress doing, uh, beating out someone like Karen Gillian is, yeah, amazing. That is fantastic. And, um, yeah, I mean, yeah, that is awesome. I mean, I just saw a Jumanji this Christmas as well, and <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I kept getting slapped by my missus for the fact that a drool was coming out every time Karen was on the screen. <laughs> yeah, well, Jack Black has that effect on people. He, he does, yeah, yeah, it's very true. <laughs> <laughs> well, he played the woman so well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, so, you know, I mean, that is a that is an astounding feat, and, um, you know, full congrats to you guys, and to Andrea especially for for being able to do that and I'll, again I'll just vouch what I said earlier is that you can tell the difference between the character Andrea plays and what she's like in normal life for yeah. her first role to do it's just phenomenal to see the change in her and yeah. I just because you, you barely recognise her you know you do barely recognise her as a, as a because you're thinking that's not Andrea McLean because it, you know, it can't be <laughs> you know because she was she was that good in it so yeah it's a and being yeah that's a hell of an accolade I didn't realise she beat Karen Gillan on that yeah, so. yeah. And that was, you know, that, that was an extra achievement, but it was good. Brilliant. Um, I'm hoping to get Karen on my show one day. <laughs> yeah, bring it up. Yeah. Just by in case she's ever on Loose Women. You know yeah, exactly. It, yeah, by, cat, but, yeah. by the way, Karen, yeah, we heard you lost out. <laughs> <laughs> there goes the... Yeah. Hang up the phone straight away. <laughs> yeah. How to end a short-lived career. <laughs> <laughs> And never work in the business again, Chris. That's that's how to do it. <laughs> cool. So, kind of uh, move, uh, looking at the premiere itself. You know, you've got the premiere to this film in the eight, on the eighteenth, yeah. and, and I can't remember the name of the hotel. It's in Soho. The Court, courthouse Hotel in uh, Soho. Excellent, excellent. And that's going to be obviously. You know, um, you've got the cast going. You're doing a Q and A as well, a live Q and A. Yeah, yeah, there's, there's me, Danny Midwinter, Danny Young, and Andre Nightingale doing the Q&A, and obviously other members of the cast are turning up, so if they want to come down to the front afterwards as well, you never know who's going to join in. Sounds absolutely fantastic, and I'm going to have to sway myself to try and get there. <laughs> <laughs> just to, just like a meet and say, you just, say, see everyone as well, and just say, this, you know, meet yourself as well, it'd be great. And just to go, I mean, going to see a premiere is something, it's, it's a great film, it's a great feeling, it's um, because you guys are all buzzing, because it's, you know, it's, it's this is the moment that your film's going. Yeah. <laughs> and it's, it's, I, I'm, I'm quite tempted to sit outside, I've seen the film, you know, I've seen it 57 times, I don't need to see it 58. But, oh, yeah, yeah. you spent all this time editing it, and <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Sit outside and have a drink while everyone else. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Wait to see if everyone comes in and still wants to talk to me afterwards. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No one comes out running. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's fine. Got to go. Yeah. <laughs> so, on the actual the, the, the release of the film, when's it actually been released to the public? Um, I believe so, there's a short theatrical release um over the next four weeks, so mm. into mid-Feb, and then I believe the, the distributors looking to bring it out on DVD, VOD, Springtime. Okay. I've got, I got no set dates, but obviously when <laughs> I do, you'll be the first to know, um, but I believe that's the plan at the moment. Fantastic, and so it's going to be like video demand and stuff like that. And Yeah, oh yes, yeah, yeah. Brilliant. but it's the future, it's like yeah. garlic bread, isn't it? <laughs> it so, is, yeah. yeah. It's yeah. <laughs> done. I know you got me started on Peter K. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Alec Brett. Yeah, so yeah, that is a great way. And obviously, video, like they say, video on demand is the future. So it'd be great to when people that's going to be available worldwide. Release to take it as well for everyone. Oh yes, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, a lot of people listen from. Apparently, my my highest user base is in America and Eastern Europe. Eastern oh. Europe, yeah. Hmm. I've never met or heard any of the guys from Eastern Europe. So if you are out there, I greet you. <laughs> Just not in your native tongue, obviously. Yeah, sad, sadly, I can't do that. But. Um, <laughs> But yeah, so that's where I'm, yeah, so it's a good that everyone obviously worldwide will be able to see the film and and get to experience and enjoy the performances as well, which is which is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and you've got another film coming out, haven't you? You've got another one. So I've got the laughs now. <laughs> um, I believe you mean the film we're about to start filming, Chris. That's the one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's the one. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we go into production with a, uh, the next film, Twenty Four Little Hours, um, literally. Five days after the 
premiere of Landscape. So God, you don't let it lie, do you? <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> no, no, uh, no, no time to rest with with that. Appreciating the high from that, and then we're straight back to work mode. Fantastic. And and what's that one about? Can you? Is there anything? You can... Or, yeah, I mean, obviously, completely different to Landscape. This one's more action based. Um, in a nutshell, a guy comes out of prison after 10 years to find that his sister's been murdered. Um, he's told, he's given an array of, it's one of these people that did it. So rather than be a detective, he just easier to go kill them all. Right. And in a day, he just goes on a rampage. And then obviously the police have to find out why. And there's a few twists and turns what come up at the end and whatnot. But yeah, so it's, it's more action-y than obviously the psychological bit that landscape is excellent excellent again that's that that's definitely my type of film <laughs> yeah. uh, oh, and we'll, like, we'll be on them when that's ready as well i'll give you oh yeah yeah definitely definitely yeah. <laughs> but yeah no that'd be cool it'd be good um i say you know to, uh, to, to follow that progress as well as you, as you go on with that one and and also follow follow all the films which are coming out from you guys now because <laughs> after seeing well, landscape <laughs> Well, yeah, exactly. I mean, did you say Pinewood? Did you film a Pinewood, did you say? We, yeah, we, find, we filmed a Pinewood for Landscape. Mm-hmm. Um, we won't be filming a Pinewood. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, we've, we filmed a Pinewood. We filmed at Elstree. Mm-hmm. You know, with Wimbledon. If you can get in there, do it. I mean, it's just the feeling you get, especially in Pinewood, when you go through the opening thing. Yeah. It's just like, wow, 007 soundstage. And when we filmed... Um, landscape there we had obviously tim burton down two buildings along with the um shadows thing the vampire thing they did with johnny depp right oh, yeah so they had this whole town built there yeah and it was right across the road from us is really scott doing prometheus at the time <laughs> so obviously having lunch was was quite a, a buzzy treat for everyone who knew who everyone was obviously yeah only one canteen and everyone's in there. That, really? That wow. Nice experience there. Yeah. That's fantastic. Uh, <laughs> just imagine just, just, get, yeah, just filming and suddenly standing next to Michael Fassbender. It'll be like. <laughs> yeah. 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 Pass the catch up, mate. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no pretense. <laughs> Excellent. I mean, I st- spoke to a stormtrooper from Force Awakens once, and he was telling me like the queue, the line queue for Star Wars was like that. But he said that yeah. some some of them were a bit more like Harrison Ford was very more, more, much more reserved and and didn't like to talk to anybody. So, yeah. <laughs> so uh, but yeah, no, I could just imagine the actual feeling for you know being a movie. You know, when you're in the movies, you know, making your movies, that's what you love doing. And suddenly finding yourself, you are you know you're in Pinewood, like you say, 007 soundstage. You've yeah. got the history of Bond. You, that's why you know you've just, <laughs> regardless if you do anything else in the rest of your life, film wise, you've made yeah. you've made a film in the same studios as Bond. <laughs> and that's it. Now that's what's going to be on my tombstone, apparently. You know. What I mean? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Poor night filmed in the Bond Studios. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Not even, not even enough room for the date. At yeah. Bob. Just that. Yeah. <laughs> excellent, excellent. And um, kind of drawing to a close, is there anything you'd love to say to maybe people that are out there who are listening? Uh, words of encouragement, words of what you'd like. I, to... I, I would say we're we're. I'll break it down. Where Landscape Alliance is concerned, those who know about the journey will know that when I say I really appreciate the support of the people that stood by us and didn't shun us and stuck with us, for them they'll always have my internal gratitude. But for every other filmmaker out there, never, never let anyone tell you something can't be done. Just keep at it. It could take a month. It could take 10 years. Just keep at it. And you'll be surprised what you'll achieve at the end. Thank you, Paul. That was actually a brilliant chat. And I've not stopped talking about garlic bread ever since. <laughs> Thanks all for tuning in. Hope you all enjoyed that. Don't forget to subscribe on YouTube, on Podbean. Follow me at Hellblazerbiz on Twitter. And look me up. And until next time, this has been Chris Gordon on Hellblazerbiz.